If you know anything about music, you know Miles Davis talks better than just about anyone when he has a trumpet on his lips. Spend some time with him and you begin to realize he talks pretty good even without a trumpet. He's no cheerful Louis Armstrong or suave Benny Goodman. He can be antisocial. But as we said when we first aired this segment last November, for Miles, it is the music that counts more than the audience. Would you be a musician if nobody ever heard you? Sure. Why? Because I love music. It's in my head. I can't get it out. So you listen? Yeah. You're hearing it yourself? I hear it now. What he hears, and then translates into something other people can hear too, is still changing. This was his latest style at a concert in Strasbourg, France last summer. At 63, he's playing and looking more like an innovative rock star than like Big Spiderbeck or even his own early smooth self. But Beiderbeck and Goodman and all the good ones were innovators in their day, and most knowledgeable people approve of Davis's energetic experiments. Are black musicians genetically better than white musicians? Get me in trouble. Not, not better, but they play different. White musicians seem to lag behind the beat. I don't know why. Does black musicians hurt more? What do you mean hurt more? I mean, is it... It's, it's, not, it's not that cliche. I mean, it's not that easy to say that because you came out of slavery, you play no, on the no, beat. No, 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 no. I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I told a student teacher of mine like that in Juilliard. She started talking about, um, well, you know, the black people would bonds at night and they just and they say that's where the blues came from so I raised my hand I said listen my father's French my mom is good looking right and I can play the blues I never suffered and don't intend to suffer look at and listen to Miles Davis 30 years ago This is a great band of the time with Miles and saxophonist John Coltrane, one of the best of the musicians who rose with Miles. By the Coltrane era, Davis had been in New York for 13 years out of East St. Louis, Illinois, had played with Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie, had studied at Juilliard, was a valued associate of the musicians who jammed in the little clubs on 52nd Street. He was the definition in person and musically, of what we then called cool. I haven't heard myself play in the 1940s or 50s in 40 years. You know, I haven't gone back to, to listen to myself again. But uh, it might have a little more residence there, you know, a little more fullness and brighter. I learned a lot when I was 30. I used to try a lot of things. But since they have synthesizers and electric instruments, you can hear those better than acoustic. So musicians learn a lot faster now. For Miles, learning and change have been positive values. He made this video clip and the album in 1986, and it won a Grammy. His complex and sometimes sullen attitude toward pests like reporters and critics has sometimes made him seem to be hard to get along with for the sake of being hard to get along with. But the great consistency of his life has been the trumpet. While he's gone from jazz to rock and Brooks Brothers to Flash, the trumpet is the same. As he noted, he hears it even when he's talking to a visitor, and it speaks for him when he can't explain himself. You have to make a... Like that. Like 
like that. It's that, that easy. You like playing with a mute. With, that, that's yeah. called a mute, right? You like that? Yeah. Why? It sounds human. Human? Yeah, it sounds like a voice. Sometimes I can get it to sound like a, another voice. A lot of your colleagues died from drugs, from heroin. You had a heroin habit. You kicked it cold turkey and went on. How did you stop? I looked in the mirror one day and I just stopped. I went out to my father's place. He had a couple hundred acres of land. And I went out, and uh, he had two compartments like this for his gas. So I went in one of them and locked the door. And I stayed there for about, about five days before I could get up and walk. And that was it. That did it? Every day does it. You know, I'm still a drug addict if I, if I use drugs. It's like being an alcoholic. But every day it gets better. Every day, every day. Then gradually it leaves your head. While you were on, while you had the habit, you did a lot of bad things. Like what? Well, you said you were pimping for a while. Is that Feed bad? The habit. <laughs> Is that bad? Well, yeah, you're right. I made a judgmental <laughs> word and I shouldn't have. You did a lot of things, different things. Pimping. Listen, girls used to come to see me, right? Whores, prostitutes, call girls. I didn't have to make love to them. They wanted me to take them out. All I would do is say, I don't have any money. They want me to take you out. So they give me a couple hundred dollars a night. <laughs> <laughs> Davis knows on-stage talent doesn't always eliminate off-stage discrimination. How does he feel about it? Are you anti-white? Not all the time. <laughs> it's encouraging. <laughs> Not right now, for instance, I hope. You know, I love pretty women, you know. And if you see me with a woman, she's going to be pretty, gorgeous. If, it, if I'm with a white woman, a white, white man will get mad. Or if I'm in my Ferrari, just with a black man, and the white man has a white woman, they talk about it. Anyway, I get those looks. Yeah. What it means to Miles Davis, the upper middle class black man, a certified member of the people who made jazz for this century, the owner of Malibu beachfront land, is that unless he makes arrangements in advance, white policemen in California suspect that when they see a black man in a Ferrari, that it is stolen. Because when I got the car, I had, a, had my lawyer call him up and said, Miles has just bought a Tessarosa and it's gray. He just thought you'd like to know that. <laughs> so I never got stopped. This is where Miles Davis lives in Malibu. He composes music here, but he also paints. These are nude, nude bodies of women. They have no arms. I have some confidence in my admiration of his music, none at all in my judgment of his painting. We were told his paintings sell for from 15 to $25,000 to people like Lionel Richie and Quincy Jones. This is a sports car. <clears throat> mm -hmm. This is a light, and this is a prostitute. And this is an airplane. Is the prostitute going to get a ride in the sports car? She might. Miles has three former wives, four children, none of whom were born by the wives. One of the ex-wives, the last, is Cicely Tyson, the actress. She's American, which gives her a bad start with Miles. What's wrong with American women? Yeah. 
first thing American women act like television. That's the first thing. They act like television? Yeah, like television series. Series. You mean they think they're in a soap opera? Well, you know, in a predicament, rather than think about it, they just act like what they saw. Yeah. In your book, you were uh, pretty hard on Cicely Tyson, your last life. Okay, my You said she wanted to control your life. She hired a private detective to follow you around. I didn't know that. You didn't know you said that in your book? I haven't gotten that far in my book. <laughs> to, to proofread it. Well, she said, you, and you just said, she would take back gifts you bought her and keep the money. Did she do that? I don't know. Friends told me that. It sounds like maybe you think maybe you should never have married her in the first place. I didn't marry her for that reason. For, I didn't marry her for sex. I didn't marry her for that reason. I thought she was a level-headed black woman, you know, but it switched. She changed? She changed because she got so jealous, you know. Will you ever get married again? To who? Not to anybody. Not to Cecil. I know it's a couple of guys I've been looking at, but never a woman again. <laughs> <laughs> Miles rarely goes out because he says that people who recognize him bother him. But this was a special occasion, his 63rd birthday in Beverly Hills with friends. Do you feel your age or do you still feel young? Where? Anywhere. As a man or as a musician, do you feel that you're getting into the golden years? And technically, you'll be eligible for Medicare in a couple of years. No, I don't think about that. <laughs> you feel young? Well, I feel the same way. All those years, I felt the same way. And his reputation is that he doesn't care what people think about him. He has the ability to forget what he considers unimportant. That applies to his ex-wives, children, lovers, but it also can mean your existence if you come to see him for an interview. Miles Davis only does what suits him, and this time he was watching a boxing match on television. You got enough money? Live for comfortably? What? To live comfortably. Yeah. I mean, you've got nice paintings, you've got a nice apartment, you got a place in Malibu, you got horses. You can... I can what? You've done all right. Yeah. When I say happy, you say you don't like that word. For me, knowledge is happiness for me. If I learn something, that makes me, you know... Still learning? Yeah. I learned something the other night. <laughs> I learned something last night. I can't wait to apply. <laughs> <laughs> So that's Miles Davis, a giant with that black trumpet, sometimes a prickly man to deal with. I have to say he was courteous and friendly to us, and fascinating. I also have to say, with the experience of talking to him and knowing his music all mixed up, I'm not sure of how I feel about him as a person. The only thing I'm sure of is that he can live with that either way. <laughs>